Okay, so we're on um, the workbook of A Course in Miracles, and it's lesson number um, 250, if I am uh, correct, which is, I, <laughs> oh, 251, I am in need of uh, nothing but the truth, and um, the section that we're reading on a daily basis, along with the next um, 10 lessons, is entitled, What is Sin? Uh, I, I was just, um, I don't know, when I said the lesson number, when I said that we were on lesson number one, 250 or 251, I realized that um, we were more than um, halfway through, and um, through the workbook, and <laughs> I am... <laughs> It amazes me that I have actually been consistent enough, um, and and by the grace of God, I've been given the ability to do one of each of the, one of these each day. Uh, it's been an interesting journey just thus far. If we're on two fifty, we have what M one sixty five. Was that like another hundred and fifteen? lessons or so to go, um, September, October, November, December, it's, um, and I, I'm surprised, actually. I, I am equally surprised and blessed that um, it's been, like, so enjoyable and mind-opening for me personally. I mean, every day, it really has been a good way for me to go back through the workbook and, and read some of the lessons that have now um, become more than just read lessons, but have become associated with reality in my own mind or principles that I utilize daily. Uh, I mean, that's what this is based. That was designed to. The, there are lessons that we're learning that allow our minds to open up and. Um, because of the nature of the experiences that we have along with the lessons, um, the truth comes through. And the more we experience the truth, the more we are motivated to continue to experience the truth. And why is that? The reason for that is the subject of lesson number 251, because I am in need of nothing but the truth. Um... I want to talk a little bit about the idea of sin, but just for a second, I want to, I want to talk about this lesson because it's, it's just so, it is, it is just plaintively true in my experience since, um, I've undergone, since this, this process of awakening, um, and, um, restoration to sanity, which is a good way of looking at it since we are operating um, under the contemplative um, auspices of this section called sin. Um, I am in need of nothing but the truth. And there have been many times, there have been many, 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 many times um, since embarking upon this journey with Jesus and my brothers, um, embarking upon this return, this journey of salvation with, with Jesus and my brothers, when I have been in less. And I don't know how to say this. I'm trying to figure out the right words. When I have been in less than right-minded, <laughs> when I have been less than right-minded and have been off, and what is sin but a missing of the mark, and when, oh man, it's so clear because it's when you are out of communication with the truth, when you are out of touch with your reality, when you are out of touch with the truth of who you are and the self that God created you to be, 
you are out of sorts and you can feel you can feel it you can feel like you're not right something is wrong the human mind sets about looking in the world for something that it can utilize to alter the way you feel so that you can feel better okay what I'm gonna tell you is there is no incident there is no occurrence of that that cannot be solved and cannot restore you to send cannot restore you to the satisfaction of knowing who you are of being uh, of feeling complete when you're complete there's nothing missing so there's nothing in you urging you to look outside of yourself and this is what he's talking about in the section of sin there's nothing urging you or motivating you to look for something to complete you or make you feel better within the constellation of the uh, within within um, the totality of the consciousness of material reality which seems to make up the world because when you are aligned and in communication with your reality with truth you are being I, I don't know how you would misunderstand this you are you are directly in communication with the source of life itself you are directly in communication with the substance and sustenance of your being which is what love is so there's nothing more that you can need because there's nothing missing so therefore there's nothing to cause you to feel out of sorts and therefore um, drive you on a search for something to bring you back into some sort of harmonious or acceptable condition of feeling within the world of space and time. Uh, and I'm seeing this really good in my mind. I just don't know if I can speak of it because it's so clear to me. What <laughs> you are renewed. Touching the truth, allowing your mind to be restored to sanity, to be removed from sin, to be, um, to dissociate the skill of identity from your identification with sin as the home of all illusions. When you begin to learn how to utilize forgiveness, because you have been saved, and forgiveness is associated with love, when your mind begins to open and make that contact, and you experience that communication with life itself, what more could you possibly need? need it rejuvenates, it renews you. It's a constant renewing. It is all that there is. Um, so I'm sort of laughing when I read this because it's so clear to me um, and it is in line and the section on sin is definitely in line with some of the other sections we're talking about the idea of we've learned that we ha our attention can be focused by our decisions and we're learning that we can decide again to refocus our attention on eternal life and love and learn lessons f directly from eternal life and love which allow us to grow in the Lord, to grow in, in, in love, to grow in the understanding of the nature of our own divinity and completion and wholeness. If you are whole and perfect, you cannot possibly need anything to complete you. And that's what this is ultimately saying. The idea that you're not is an illusion. So you must represent yourself as a body within a space, within a spatial temporal illusion that is not your reality in order to attempt to prove that this is true and nothing is true. Um, sin is the home of all illusion which but stands for things imagined, issuing from thoughts that which are untrue. It's, it's, it's like the foundation, the thought upon which um, the world is formed is this idea of sin 
and the foundation is false, so the entire world is false as well. And yet, because we've forgotten who we are, we look at the falsity and attempt to make it true by pursuing solutions and goals and ends within the falsity as if they are a reality, and the experiences that we get um, are become the, the experience of either frustration or gaining the goal become the proof that it is reality rather than um, an illusion. Um, that is why, eventually you will turn your mind away from um, illusion and sin entirely and begin to recognize that there is only one reality, and that reality is the reality um, that you share with God and all your brothers as a soul in the kingdom. Can you see? Can you feel it? Let the illusion go. Pass it by. So what? As it said, everything can be redirected. Your mind can be redirected. And that's what's occurring. We're redirecting your mind right now. How long, O oh Son of God, will you maintain the game of sin? Shall we not put away these sharp-edged children's toys? How soon will you be ready to come home? Perhaps today. There is no sin. Creation is unchanged. Would you still hold the return to heaven back? How long... Oh, holy son of God, how long? Um, why would you why would you delay your return? Or the dawning of the understanding that you never left? Unless there was still something in the illusion that held out hope to you that things could be different. Now, I want you to understand the hope the ego utilizes to hold out and to keep you searching in illusion as if things could be different and you could be satisfied or you could feel yourself complete by pursuing something within the illusion, okay, is a promise that can be only for, it's true, what you're looking for is true, where you're looking for it is false. But you can just as easily turn the skill that you're utilizing to look for it away from looking for it in the falsity of the illusion and look for it in the heart of truth that you already share with God and with all your brothers. And that's your choice. Yet, you will have to give up sin. You will have to understand sin's relationship to the world and how the feelings that sin fosters are reminiscent of what you're looking for in truth. But the search that the ego and sin sets you on in falsity has no ability to ever succeed and is designed to keep lack in place, to keep you with a sense that completion is possible on a search for that which can complete you, wherein which each failed attempt at finding completion serves as a verification that it can be found in an illusion where it is impossible because it's non-existent. And that's the dilemma that we face. And yet forgiveness offers me everything I want. I mean, I need nothing but the truth. And what's the way to truth except forgiveness? So just try it for a day. <laughs> try, it for, try it one time fully. Understand. Read this. Read what it is saying about sin. Take it into your mind and heart, into this, into this contemplative experience that Jesus is offering to us in A Course in Miracles. Spend some time with this um, little section on sin this morning and in the evening and sometime in each of the next ten days. Read the reasonability. Read how much Jesus makes sense and is offering you everything you've always wanted merely by shifting 
the direction that you're searching in. What you're looking for is true. What you're looking for is real. But you can't find it in an illusion. The reason why you're looking for it in the first place, though, is likewise illusory. All worldly states are illusory. None can offer you the truth of who you are, the satisfaction, the joy, the perfection, and the eternal happiness, eternal life, and infinite abundance. That can only be found when you allow your mind, which, as Jesus says, search you must, when you allow your mind to have its search directed by principles that come from you, come to you, from something that has already achieved the end that while you may not have set out to achieve, your mind has been sufficiently changed to recognize that it is your answer. So I am in need of nothing but the truth. And whatever comes along with that, you can accept freely and without guilt because it's being offered to you from a right-minded, within a right-minded perspective of understanding that the search that you are now on has been set away from within the world and toward the divine within which you are whole, perfect part of. And in those moments of completion, when you have an experiential recognition of the wholeness of who you are and who your brother is in the kingdom of heaven, which is a totality, you will recognize that in your inability to ever have made the bodily condition true, there is nothing within the illusion that is designed to aid and abet the reality of the bodily condition. There is nothing that can satisfy you, because there's nothing here at all, and the, that which is attempting to utilize it to be satisfied was not who you are in the first place anyway. Can you feel that? Can you get a sense of that? Can you see it? Can you see how free you really are? The body is an instrument, the mind made, in its striving to deceive itself. Its purpose is to strive. Yet can the goal of striving change? Yes. And now the body serves a different aim for striving. What it seeks for now is chosen by the aim the mind has taken as a replacement for the goal of self-deception. Truth can be its aim as well as lies. The, sen the senses then will seek instead for witnesses to what is true. And there was an important line in here that I wanted to read. Okay, uh, let me, it's up here, it's a little further. Um, sin gave the, bodies, gave the body eyes. For what is there? The sinless will be all. That's what I was trying to say before. If you're already whole, perfect, and complete, what would you be looking for outside of yourself? If you're not experiencing yourself as whole, perfect, and complete, then you are insane because that's how God has created you to be. You don't know who you are. If you don't know who you are, then search you must. But if you don't know who you are and where you are, then you attempt, then the search that you attempt will be in vain. And that's what this is saying, and being a man, it sees illusion where truth should be and where reality and where it really is. Sin gave the body eyes, so what is there the sinless would behold? What need have they for sight or sound or touch? There would be nothing compelling you toward what these things have to offer you, so there would have been no necessity for it if we had maintained the truth of who we are in our conscious memory in our awareness now. And when we experience that, that's what we learn. Um, what would they hear if we reach the grasp? 
what would they sense at all? This is the important line because many of you still rely, we have this idea of intuition and inspiration and it gets all mixed up by the ego into a melange of something and we begin to, to sense is not to know. So when you sense something, it means you really don't know. You can use it as the key to recognizing you don't know and then allow your mind to be changed through a way of looking at it so you can know and learn. Not in, but you can't do that if you think just because you sense something, you know it. Simply because the idea of sense is already removed from the truth and was made to deny the truth. It's a function of the denial of truth, not a function of who you are in reality. Because in reality, you only know. Things are known. And truth can be but filled with knowledge and with nothing else, of course. So to sense is not to know. So don't fool yourself when you begin to say, well, I'm sensing something. Recognize that the act of sensing something is the admission of not knowing. And then allow your mind to go to that which knows, join with it, the Holy Spirit, and with all of reality, so that you too can know, as God knows, your brothers, so you can know yourself and your brothers and God as well, as he knows. Okay? And that's about all we're going to talk about here today. Sin is insanity. It is the means by which the mind is driven in and seeks to let illusion take the place of truth. But truth remains the only thing you need to restore yourself to sanity in the recognition of your own wholeness and completion where in which nothing is lacking. So there's no reason to have implements to search outside for something that doesn't exist. You're not a body, you're free.